Welcome friends. Looks like today I'm working on a 36 Ford sedan. A friend of mine brought this thing over. He bought it about a year or two ago. It's a super nice car and interior, everything's done on it. It has a small block uh, Ford engine in it, 351 Windsor. And, um, but for some reason, when they built the car, they left the stock 36 steering box in it. And it was so crazy worn out, you could hardly steer the car. It would stay in this turn position. You could go into, in circles with it without even touching the wheel. But it's a super nice front end. It's got like a bell dropped front suspension on it. Uh, what he wanted me to do was put a uh, power steering box in it and put power steering in it. So here's the box. I swapped it out. I cannot find the old box for the life of me. But you can trust me when I tell you it's about the size of my hand. So here's the new box right here. Now it's a, I originally bought an 800 series GM box. It came out, came out of midsize cars, but it was a little too big. It came up about this far and it was a little too deep. And I didn't, so I got very little room between here and here. And I'll show you that in a minute. But uh, so I bought this box. It's a, it's a uh, Chevy Vega power steering box. Now this is a cross steer setup in this car. In the Vega box and some GM boxes where the box sits behind the front suspension, um, they turn at the right angle for a cross steer box. Uh, other boxes do not operate. The lever will move in the wrong direction. Um, so uh, I cut out the original brackets that were on the frame for the stock box. And I found this bracket that's pretty close for the 36 Ford box and is able to bolt that in there, drill some holes and bolt it in. And then this box bolted right to that bracket. So it's a pretty good spot now. It's not too bad. It's I might cut this little edge off of here, right here, give a little more clearance, but it clears that pretty good. I can fit my finger back there. So that's not too bad. And then of course I got a steering arm for it as well. But being a Vega box, there's a lot offered for that. So this box turns out, uh, I think, I believe it was a 500 series, they called it. But it looks like Vega only had manual boxes. So there are companies that build power steering versions of them now. And it wasn't that bad. It was like 400 bucks for the box. And um, you can buy all kinds of, all, any kind of arm you need for them. Uh, the spline counter tells you what it is. So you can buy what you need for the U-joint. Now on the original box, original four boxes are one piece for the column so i had to cut it in half to get that out of there so all of the uh the headlight controls and everything ran through the column shaft out the bottom of the box so i'm going to have to rewire a new uh headlight switch and stuff and and turn signals and uh, these boxes do have or these columns even have a lockout which is pretty neat you can lock the column i wish i could reuse that but but this column's only inch and a half and we both agreed to keep it a little more traditional. So I bought this column from Speedway. It's inch and three quarters. It's like a hot rod style. So it's super simple. It's not big and bulky, you know, like a tilt column or anything like that. It'll look more traditional. It does have a quick release top on it. And then I just put a dummy wheel on it to count for mock-up. And then I bought some of these uh, clamp-on mounts to go with it. They were pretty cheap, so I got two of them. And this is what they call the double D style. See how it's a round shaft with two flat ends on it, making two double D ends. Now, this is a three quarter double D, then there's a big one that's called one inch double D, but most everything is three quarter, even production cars. So, see, so here's the other side. See, this is a double D that I had laying around. I used for mock up. So, this shows you how short it's going to be from the end of the column from the steering box super short fit so it's a real tight situation here and then this will slide right over right over that but what's pretty neat i think i'm going to go with this so i came up with a sleeve so it's so short um so short inside the coming out of that column here that I can't have this stick out too far outside the firewall because this is the only length room that I have and the shorter this gets the steeper this angle is going to get and they're going to bind so the column actually this doesn't come out the bottom of the 
firewall like most cars. It actually comes out to here. So I made this sleeve and I found an axle seal that works really well. It'll, it'll fit around there. It'll slip right over it. And then this will come out to there and that's about right. So this much of it will be inside the car before it tapers down into this. And this is big enough here to allow some angle movement. And if that makes any sense, when I'm done with it, I'll show you how, how it looks. But it'll give me the length I need to keep the angles to a minimum. And when I had this, if you can see the bottom of the floor right there, look at that giant gaping hole in there. Somebody kind of butchered that up a little bit. It was just an open hole with just some foam packed around it. So I got to kind of clean that up and close it up. So I'm, I got the steering wheel. This is an awesome wheel. It's, I think this is kind of what, what they call the old banjo steering wheel. It's super nice. It's a shame that he cut that out. I was hoping he'd reuse the shaft and everything. I could attach the shaft to one of those U-joints and keep this wheel. But he didn't want it. He didn't like how big it was. But I'm not, don't worry, I'm not throwing that out. If you'll let me have it. So, the being that there's absolutely no room in here, and I'm running a Saginaw pump. Now I have one laying around here. They were used on everything. This one's for a Chrysler. So, this low pressure uh, feed line is kind of in the wrong place. But um, it mounts kind of like this. Be right there, and that's super close, super tight fit. So they sell they sell kits for these engines, but they all sit out here way too wide, like for cars and trucks. So what I did is I had this GM uh, power steering bracket that was a low bracket on a GM 350 laying around. So for a Saginaw box, so the, the pivots here slots here so this bracket's pretty nice it'll save me some time it's probably about what half inch thick almost so i made a little bracket that bolted to the head three sixteenths steel some spacers for mock-up and um that looks really nice it's going to fit right here it's going to be lined up with the belt and everything i got room to put the lines on the back of it and they'll go down to here and the, you can buy power steering line kits um, that are pretty good. You'll have to have one of the hoses probably crimped. But from what I've seen, it usually comes out cheaper than having everything made because that stuff's getting expensive to have everything made. Um, and then this side is the power steering. Now the power steering had to be really low. Um, this has only got two pulleys on it on the bottom. I have no room to get a three pulley uh, for the bottom with the fan and I'm not going into all this changing fan to electric and all this stuff. I, I would rather have my me leave mechanical on it anyways for simplicity. So we're leaving the two pulley belt pulley set up on the bottom. So the power steering will run off of the water pump pulley and the crank run over there and then the alternator will run off the crank pulley only over to here. So I came up with this right here. It's 3 16 steel. It's kind of rough shaped in right now. And I got my hanger here. Kind of eyeballed the, the belt for the moment. I left it to where I could shim it a little, change these shims around and move it a little bit. And then I'll run a plate from here to here. It'll be totally self-contained. And I've already got my adjustment right here and it swings around the bottom. That turned out pretty nice pretty happy about that. that that was something that was weighing on my mind having to do this but that took me about a day to come up with all this stuff and that so far I like how it's going now with that with the steering column Speedway sells a bunch of these with different lengths they even sell them in chrome and you just mock up your car and kind of get an idea of the length of the column you need and just order that. I think it was like a couple hundred bucks or something. But it looks like even if you're too long, you could undo this clamp right here 
This is just a pressed in bearing and then you could cut the shaft and make it shorter. But then you can also get, but then if this is too long and you can't use the double D portion of it, you can buy these U joints with just solid, uh, solid openings in them, like three quarter solid or three quarter round and just attach it to that and then just either weld it or pin it or something like that. Usually on these, if it's a joint, um, it's where you ever have to go back and fix a joint. So I usually tack them if I can, just for added security on something, especially if it's gonna be a lot of abuse. But I'll leave one bolt, one or two on this end bolted on so that I can slip it apart still if I need to, or just slip it off the steering box. Yeah, this car is really neat though. I mean, I like the slot mags. These are, most of the old slot mags had five beans or kidney beans in it. And this one's got six. They're pretty neat, newer, but they're nice. So it's a nice car. It's just a shame somebody left the old box in it. And it, and I was told that it even had uh, air conditioning. And before it was sold, the guy had removed the air conditioning. So I can imagine it, the compressor must've been down in here because there's no room anywhere up in here. I mean, it's, if you look at the, the head and the engine here, it's right on it. See how close it is? So I gotta have that power steering pump like right there. And these are really nice, rare curved headlight beams, man. Look at those things. Yeah, those bring some good money right there. I got a pair of those that somebody gave me for my Ford, but you need a special ring to match them. So I'd have to get some rings to match that to put those on the car. And then I wanted to show you guys another thing. I'm working on this uh, Rebel here as well, and it's a suspension rebuild. I wanted all the bushings replaced. So I just wanted to give you a quick go through uh, or, or show you how I remove the uh, bushings in these things. See, see right here is a coil spring rear suspension. So here are the upper arms and then the lower arms. And it needed all new springs. Somebody tried to lower it and cut it to where it was sitting on the ground. So I got the new ones in there. So typically what I do, there are there are remover tools that would probably make this easier. But I don't have them. So I do have that big boy right there, torch. So what I do here is I'll flip this thing up. I'll warm it up with the torch. Then all you got to do... Once it's warmed up, take one of these, hit it with a hammer, and that rubber will pop right out of the case. Now, this is the case right here. The rubber will just fly right out of it. It'll loosen it up, and then once the case is there, I'll, I'll warm up this ridge right here where it clamps around it. This one just kind of floats on there, this side, you can see. So I'll, I'll ding it with a punch, kind of flatten it a little bit. This one I had to do, just lightly cut it down the side and try not to cut, cut any of this stuff. But just gently cut it and then you start smacking it with a hammer and these will just pop right out. But you can flatten that side with a punch and you still might be able to get it with a hammer and flatten it. Now this stuff is just sheet metal. It will bend a little bit and twist a little bit. You can straighten it back out. It's not the end of the world. This stuff is just stamped steel. It's nothing fancy. ones here yeah so they turned out fine they're not going anywhere a little bit of work and then on the front I could not get the stock rubber all I could get was urethane now so these are made by prothane pretty good price I could not get rubber ones anywhere there's only a few real manufacturers that make this stuff and then everybody else puts their label on them not this stuff, but the factory ones, like Centec and stuff like that. But uh, these are pretty nice. I'm not a big fan of urethane myself. I, I, I think they tend to squeak a lot, but they give you lubricant with them. Eh, trust me, it's in there. But you give you lube with them. But anyway, so these things, you just pull the center out. I just pushed them right on in there. They went in. So with these, though, you leave the, the case in there. 
see this is one for the rear see how the case is still around the rubber on one of the old ones on this one this one was kind of loose and it popped right out that's why it's not cut up like the others so it says clearly leave the case in there so i warmed these up popped out the rubber and then just slide these new ones in and leave the case assembly in there and then once that's in there then this just pushes right on in you just lube it up really good luby dooby with their with their goo and that's it it's in there these are pretty wild design on these cars it is not fun getting the coil springs back in them this car has been here way too long but he brought me stock fat you know stock lower control arms with new bushings in them and i saw the upper bushings they just did not look that good so while i'm in here i was like since i'm in here i might as well replace them yeah see that one's gone and then yeah somebody tried to lower this thing really did quite a job and uh, it was just riding on the bump stops now getting those bushings out of that thing did take a little bit of time and like i said they will twist and, and bend up a little bit but they're just stamped sheet metal you just straighten them back out and they'll be just fine but i picked this thing up now if you ever have any problem getting anything apart let's say you got a problem like over here somewhere you got one of these there's no problem any there anymore if you got a problem over there you have no more problem get one of these bad boys you will never have a problem again even if you got some crazy guy walking in your yard you have no problem now i guess that'll be it for today i appreciate you all watching like and subscribe and i'll be here thanks